let's start talking about uh, simple machines, not only what they are, but what do they actually do, okay? So let's talk about, as far as what can they do, mechanical advantage, okay? All right, so mechanical advantage, here's the deal. What do all simple machines have in common? Whether we're talking about a lever or an inclined plane or a wedge or a screw or a, um, uh, what's the word? Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, all the simple machines, okay? What do they all have in common? Wheel and axle, there's another one. What do they all have in common? And the key thing that they all have in common is this, the mechanical advantage. There's an advantage to using them, and it's mechanical in nature. That's what mechanical advantage is, okay? But in physics, we have to sort of quantify it. We have to put a number to it. Okay, and so what we do is we say that the mechanical advantage, which we'll abbreviate as MA, is really just known as the number of times that the machine multiplies your force. Okay, so for example, if I can exert a 20 Newton force, okay, and the machine puts out a 60 Newton force, that means that my mechanical advantage is, well, let's see, this divided by this is 3. My mechanical advantage is three and that's it there's no units at all because what you would have is 60 newtons divided by 20 newtons and the newtons cancel out and all you're left with is this ratio it's three okay so in this case if I put in 20 but the machine cranks out 60 I <coughs> that machine has a mechanical advantage of three now for all of the machines you calculate it like this it's the force out divided by the force in. And that's what we did over here. This, the 20 newtons, was my input force, or my F in. And this was my output force, or my force out. And so all I did was I took whatever the force out was and divided by the force in. It's really that simple. Whatever you get out, divided by what you get in. Okay. There is another term for this, though. Okay. Like I said before, okay, your force in can also be known as your effort force. And your force out can also be known as your resistance force. So just remember when you're doing this, okay, input is the same as effort, okay, and output is the same as resistance. Okay, just remember that. They are these green ones are the same and the blue ones are the same all right so just ratio really not that bad okay all right now here's the cool thing is that some machines actually have shortcuts for calculating this and this is where it's going to get a little long but i still have these uh, up here in the corner because these work for all machines okay but not all machines, not all problems are going to tell you what the forces are that you put in and out. Some of them are just going to show you the lever or show you the pulley or show you the inclined plane or show you the wheel and axle. And I expect you to figure out what the mechanical advantage is. So here's what we do. Let's go one by one. Okay? Let's go with the lever. Okay. Now, if you look at the lever, this is the equation. The mechanical advantage of the lever is the effort distance divided by the effort, or sorry, divided by the resistance distance, or the input distance divided by the output distance. Remember, output is resistance, it's the same thing. So let's look at it in terms of a picture, okay? Uh, let's do some colors here. Let's say red is the effort distance, okay? And blue is the, whoops, sorry. Blue is the resistance distance, okay? Ignore that, okay? Now, the effort distance is going to be the distance between the fulcrum and the force, okay? And the resistance distance is the distance between the fulcrum and the load. So in this case, what you do is you take uh, whatever this number is. It looks like, let's say maybe that's 2 and let's say that's one, okay? So you would do two divided by one. So the mechanical advantage of this lever looks to be about two, okay? Um, in this type of, folk, of uh, sorry, lever, 
I believe it's second class lever. It's a little bit different. Okay, it's still the effort distance or the effort arm is from the fulcrum to the force, okay? and still the resistance distance is from the fulcrum to the load or where the force is being applied. Okay, so in this case, again, you still get. Let's say this is two. It looks like it looks like it's about twice as long as this one. Oops, so this should be one. So you would do two divided by one, and again you would get a mechanical advantage of two. Okay. So the idea is that if I exert a force of I don't know, let's say ten newtons up here, at the load there's going to be a, it's going to be exerting a twenty newton force. And if you remember from before. I'm pushing twice as far here than I am here, but I'm getting twice as much force in the middle. Okay? So if you look to the third class lever, okay, the effort, this is an interesting one, the effort arm or the effort distance is shorter than the resistance distance. This is interesting. You would think you wouldn't want to use this because in this case, the it's one and two so it's one divided by two, which gives you a mechanical advantage actually of one half, which almost doesn't make sense. But there are things that use this. Key one, your arm, okay? What lifts your arm, when I lift something with my hand, what's really happening is the load, the force is in my hand, and I'm actually pulling up with my tendon. My tendon is a little rope basically attached to my bone, which pulls up. I'm actually exerting a lot of force with my bicep, okay, um, and getting much less force out of this, okay. But anyway, that's uh, that's another deal, okay. All right. So just remember, effort divided by resistance. Put that on your essential equation sheet. That will come in handy later, okay. All right. So let's move on a little bit. What about a pulley, okay? Well, if we're dealing with a pulley, the idea is the number of strings, and let me put something else on here, that support the load. Now we already talked about how that's a gross overgeneralization and it's not technically correct, but for what we're doing, that's good enough. Okay. So in this case, let's take a look at this one. You have a force of 100 newtons being applied, so that's the input force, and what's being out, coming out, is 100 newtons. So 100, 100, the force out is 100, so it's 100 divided by 100, which is 1. Okay. Over here, though, you have one, two strings that support the load, one and two, and there's a movable pulley. And what winds up happening is your output force is 100, but now you only have to put in 50 newtons. So you do 100 divided by 2, and you get a mechanical advantage of 2. Similar thing over here. You've got 1, 2, 3 strings, which means you have a mechanical advantage of 3 because they're supporting the load. And so again, what you notice is 100 Newton force coming out because you're lifting that 100 uh, Newton weight, but you only need to apply 33 and a half Newtons of force. And then you look here at the last example, you've got 4 strings supporting the load. So, you wind up getting 100 newtons of force out of 25 newtons of force being put in. The difference here, though, remember, is distance. You may be exerting a quarter of the force, but you're going to have to pull this string four times as far as what this is being lifted up. So, if this is being lifted up 10 centimeters, you're going to have to move this 40 centimeters. So, the extra force comes at a cost of distance. It's a trade-off. Okay. All right. So let's talk about another one that has a shortcut: the wheel and axle. All right. So the basic idea here is you got your wheel, that's the big part, and then you got your axle in the middle. Okay. This is also how a screwdriver works. This is how a steering wheel works. Uh, these. This is also how bicycle gears work. Um, but here we go. The way it works is you take the radius of the wheel, that's what R stands for here, the radius of the wheel divided by the radius of the axle. Okay? Now, For example, this wheel right here, it shows you 
from the middle of the circle to the outer part right there is, like it says, five, it looks like inches. I don't like using inches. I'll just pretend it's centimeters. So the radius of the wheel is five centimeters, okay? And I divide that by the radius of the axle, okay? Which is this little distance in here. That's how big the axle is from the middle of it to the outside. And it tells me that that's one centimeter. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the radius of the wheel and dividing it by the radius of the axle. And what do I get as my mechanical advantage? Five. Five divided by one is five. Okay? So the idea here is that with the wheel, okay, when you turn this wheel, if you exert a force of five newtons on the outside of the wheel, you're going to get a force of 25 newtons on the outside of this wheel. That's why a screwdriver works so well, because you exert a less powerful force on the, um, uh, on the handle, which exerts a much bigger force on the actual shaft of the screwdriver. Okay? So that's the wheel and axle. You just take the bigger radius divided by the inner radius. Okay? And one last one for this set, and it's the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane. This is probably the easiest one uh, until you start doing some uh, geometry, but we're not going to get into that in this class. So what you have going on here is the inclined plane is like this, and all you have to do is take the length okay, and divide it by the height. That is it. Okay, let's make an estimation here. Okay, this looks like maybe it's about, I don't know, let's just say this is, uh, oops, wrong color. Let's say this is about six um, centimeters. And this looks like it's about a third of that. So this would probably be a height of about two centimeters. Okay, so what do I do? I take the length divided by the height. Okay, so I do six centimeters divided by two centimeters, the centimeters cancel out, and what do we get? Well, we get a mechanical advantage of three. Now just keep in mind though, this is important, it's the length. It is not from here to here, no, no. It's the length of the plane going up, okay? So it's not, it's not the length from side to side, it's the hypotenuse, it's the length of the hypotenuse, okay? So there you go, there are some shortcuts not only do you have the shortcuts, okay, so if I give you a problem, look at the shortcuts first, see if there's a shortcut, and then if you don't know, well, just look at the forces, okay? You could either do mechanical advantages force out divided by force in or resistance force over effort force. It's the same equation, but um, remember, these top ones work for all machines. These bottom ones work only for the machines that they are shown here for, okay? Um, Ask me a question in class, and uh, I'll see you then.